Good afternoon, it's Dr. John Bennett from Miami Beach Studio of Neurosurgical TV. We have another in the weekly Africa Neurosurgery Grand Rounds, and today we're graced with the presence of Natalie Gumsi, who we're watching grow up on this channel. She was a student, uh, and she attended these conferences, and now she's a resident at the Ivory Coast. Before we turn over to Natalie, let's meet the panelists. Hello, Zolo. Hello, Dr. Ben. Hello, everybody. I am Zolo Ivan. I'm a City Medical student from the University of Buya in Cameroon. I'm a member of AFAN, Association of Future African Neurosurgeons, and I'm happy to be here today. Thank you. Very good, Zolo, and a vital member of this team. Hello, Marco. Hello, guys. Uh, my name is Marco Meloni. I'm a consultant neurosurgeon in North Italy. Nice to see you again. Okay, welcome, Marco. Uh, Dr. Gubolo, are you there? We may have stepped away. Oh, go ahead, Dr. Boy. Hello, everyone. My name is Kabulo. I'm a resident in neurosurgery at the University of Zimbabwe. Yeah, like Marco, a frequent visitor to this channel. Regis, are you there? Go ahead, yeah, Regis. I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. Go ahead, Regis. Okay, hello, everyone. So, my name is uh, Regis Takokam. A uh, resident in neurosurgery in Ivory Coast, uh, so it's my it's my first year. It's yes. good it's, it's it's good to be to be here uh, a new time for for another session. So nice to meet you all. Okay, welcome, Regis. Okay, Natalie, welcome, and it's all yours. Yeah, uh, hello everyone. I'm Natalie Gomsi. I'm a resident PGY1 neurosurgery in Abidjan. So uh, today we are going to present on uh, on the emergency uh, emergency um, uh, management of uh, brain tumors. So let me just share my screen. Okay. Uh, I hope everybody can see. Yes. Yes, we can see you well. Okay, so as I said today, we are going to present on emergency management of brain tumors. So as introduction, we'll say that uh, patients with uh, brain tumors, uh, excuse me, uh, okay, patients with brain tumors and uh, systemic malignant, systemic malignancies are subject to uh, diverse neurologic complications that require urgent evaluation and treatment. And it is essential for neurocritical care professionals to recognize and appropriately treat common oncologic emergencies associated with these uh, malignancies. This, this, uh, uh, this, uh, these uh, complications are usually a result of either a direct effect of the brain tumor on the central nervous system and indirect complications of various treatment modalities. So the prompt diagnosis and timely management may preserve neurologic functions and may even be life-saving. We will start by uh, describing, the dif describing the different direct effects of uh, brain tumor on uh, the CNS. The first uh, and the most frequent complication is an increase in intracranial pressure, which is usually due to cerebral edema. This is uh, as a consequence of an expanding mass lesion associated with cerebral edema. Hence, there are prominent features of uh, high uh, grade and um, primary brain tumors such as glioblastomas and sometimes meningiomas. These uh, brain edemas are most often vasogenic rather than cytotoxic, and uh, the etiologies are variable. The first being the presence of vascular endothelial uh, growth factor, which plays a key role in tumor angiogenesis and uh, vasogenic edema formation. This uh, VGF will also compromise the blood, the blood brain barrier, resulting in free leakage into the surrounding brain. This VGF may also impair the function of uh, occludin, induce a fenestration of, uh, endothelial of, of the endothelium, and lead to synthesis of and release of nitric oxide, which is um, which, which uh, uh, participates in the opening of the tight junctions and enhances the capillary perme permeability. So on this image, we have a T2 uh, MRI of a, of a uh, 
on an asset called cut of a cerebral, uh, of a cerebral MRI, which shows you can see the, the, the edema, this is the tumor, and the edema all around. You can see that there's even uh, a herniation, an onca herniation, and there's a deviation of the midline. There's a midline shift. Uh, this vasogenic uh, edema could also be due to uh, radiotherapy. So we have two cases here. We have, have a pseudo progressive um, uh, edema, which are usually, which usually uh, spontaneously decreases in few, few weeks. Or these radiations will also lead to vascular damage and hence radiation necrosis. And usually the, 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 the edema resolves uh, much, much more lately. This edema could also be cytotoxic. It is usually the, due to uh, uh, status epilepticus, meningoencephalitis, hyperammonemia, or stroke. A decrease in CSF outflow uh, could also cause uh, brain edema by vascular absorption or decrease in CSF absorption. This edema also could be caused by the presence of intratumoral hemorrhage. The clinical signs are usually that of an increased increase uh, of uh, increased uh, intracranial pressure, that's headache, vomiting, nausea, papilledema, etc. And we could also have a cushing reflex. A cushing reflex is um, it's a triad which associates triad which associates uh, hypertension, bradycardia, and also uh, a deep snail. Usually, when you have this uh, this uh, cushion reflex, it is it is sign that there's a broken the need to promptly uh, to promptly uh, act in order to re uh, to reduce the mortality. So on this image, we have a brain scan on the acyl cut, which shows a hydrocephalus, a hydrocephalus, and we can see that there is edema around the. There's a fusion that's the there's a fusion of, of liquid towards the parenchyma around the, the, the hydrocephalus. This is an obstructive hydrocephalus. The treatment, uh, the treatment of uh, of brain edema are variable, but the main aim is to decrease is to decrease the intracranial pressure. Usually we start by general measures like head elevations, 30 to 40 degrees to 45 degrees above the trunk. Or um, hyperventilation, hyperventilation with um, hyperventilation to uh, increase the the partial pressure of uh, CO2 to uh, 26 to 30 milli, 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 uh, millimeters millimeters mercury. Actually, when you have a hyperventilation, you will lead to a vasoconstriction of uh, of the vessel and hence decreasing the cerebral blood volume. Next, what we can do is that we can use uh, medical therapy that's, uh, we can start by osmotherapy, where uh, we, we can use hyper, whereby hyperosmolar agents such as hypertonic saline or manitol create an osmotic gradient that draws water across the, that draws water across an intact blood, blood brain barrier to the higher, uh, to a higher osmolarity of blood. So we can use, as I said, hyper, hypertonic saline at 3 to 23.4 percent concentration, or we can even use manitol. Secondly, if that doesn't work, we can also use corticosteroid. Cortico the, the main corticosteroid uh, recommended is uh, dexamethasone, where we start by loading dose of 10 to 20 milligrams, and then we shall give a daily dose of 8 to 16 milligrams, where that will be divided into four doses per day. Usually, we have a benefit here within 24 to 72 hours. And lastly, we can use an inhibitor of uh, vascular uh, endothelial growth factor, which is be map. This is usually done not emergently, because it did not emergently, could be done lately to reduce vagogenic uh, edema. If all these medical methods doesn't work, we can, we, we can be able to do a uh, screen. Amongst the first, it's more the bulk is a procedure whereby a surgically incurable malignant neoplasm. A surg uh, please, can you get me all? I think my net is unstable. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's okay for me. Okay, thank you. 
Tumor debulking is a procedure whereby surgically incurable malignant neoplasm is partially removed without creative intentions. It could be done in order to, um, to make subsequent uh, therapies, therapy with drugs, radiations, or to ameliorate the length of uh, survival of the patients. It could also be brought to do an evacuation of the hematoma if you have an intracranial uh, hemorrhage. We could also be brought to do a ventriculostomy in case of obstructive hydrocephalus, as we said. Of. But we have to know that patients with uh, glioblastomas will usually benefit from gross total resection alongside with radio, uh, radiotherapy and uh, the use of uh, temozolamide as uh, chemotherapy usually improves the overall survival, but this is not done in emergence and an emergency. The second direct effect of uh, cancer on the CNS is usually epilepsy or status epilepticus. It is a frequent complication of primary and, meta and uh, metastatic brain tumors. It usually occurs early in the course of the disease, and it is um, the risk of, of, this, of its occurrence is usually inversely proportional to the grading of the tumor. In contrast, tumors associated uh, status epilepticus most often arises later in the course and may indicate tumor progression. The administration of uh, anti-epileptic drugs uh, is usually uh, has, uh, has there is usually a poor penetration of anti-epileptic drugs into the epileptic uh, epileptogenic lesions. This is usually secondary to the expression of multi-drug resistant proteins by the tumor, or the tumor may interact with concomitant uh, chemotherapeutic agents used in the treatment of high-grade tumors. Most commonly, uh, the patients with uh, glioneural malignancy, such as uh, dysambioplastic neuroepithelial tumors and gangliomas, or diffuse low grade gliomas and uh, glioblastomas, will, um, will uh, manifest either a status epilepticus or epilepsy. Among the patients with low grade gliomas, those with oligodendrogliomas and uh, oligoastrocytomas are more prone to develop seizures than those with astrocytomas. This is due to the more cortical, the, the cortical and the liter. We have to note that this state is usually rare in, in, in patients who have brain metastasis. The tumors, uh, patients who have uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, state or epilepsy, who manifest with epilepsy with seizures are usually um, Patients who have tumors which are located in epileptogenic areas such as the mesial temporal lobe, the insula, on the cortex. On the cortex, the some molecules have been incriminated to the to the uh, to uh, with patients who uh, manifest seizures, who manifest seizures, uh, uh, with manifest seizures in their tumors, with their tumors. We have isocytrate dehydrogenase one and two, which are driver mutations in low-grade gliomas and are reported to be associated with an increased risk of seizures. So studies made on low-grade gliomas, we found that there was this um, IDH, uh, IDH with a high prevalence or high incidence of prevalence of uh, seizures in these patients. Glutamate has also been incriminated as well as uh, GABA, as, as well as GABA. The treatment, as for the treatment, we realized, uh, it is being realized that uh, older generations anti-epileptic, older generation anti-epileptic drugs such as phenobarbital, phenotoin, and gamabazepine induce satocom P450 enzymes, which can accelerate the metabolisms of common com chemotherapeutic agents and decrease their effectiveness, and hence decrease their effectiveness. Hence, newer uh, anti-epileptic drugs, including levetiracetam, lamotrigine, and lacosamide, are preferred due to the low probability of pharmacokinetic interactions and a more favorable tolerability profile. We have to note that uh, anti-epileptic drugs resistance seems to be directly proportional to the tumor grade. The higher the, the, the tumor grade, the, the, the higher the, 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 the resistance. 
Finally, we have a direct effect. We have a leptomeningeal meningitis metastasis. This is a rare but debilitating complication of malignancy with dissemination of the cancer cells in the to the CS to the whole of uh, the the uh, the cerebrospinal fluid. It can also disseminate to the pia and the arachnoid matters. It represents 1.2 uh, 1 to 2 percent of patients with primary brain tumors such as high-grade diomas, medulloblastomas, epidermomas, and, uh, and the pineoblastomas. The spread of these uh, cells, of these malignant cells, could be either hematogenous, it could be at a direct extension, it could be a direct extension, it could also spread to the correct places, or a retrograde invasion along the perineural or perivascular space. The clinical presentation of, the, of leptomeningeal uh, metastasis is really varied, so there's no clear presentation for, 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 for this pathology. It usually involves, can manifest by simple headache up to seizures. We could also have uh, cranial neuropathies associated. But on the MRI, the leptomeningeal metastasis would manifest as, as you can see on the... Let me take the... As we can see on the, the MRI, uh, the MRI on the on the right, we have um, linear or or nodular enhancement of the cerebral sulci, the cerebellar fo folia, the basal system, as you can see here on the optochiasmatic system. And then in the optochiasmatic system, it can also be uh, invade the sub ependyma, the cranial and the spinal nerves. It can also cause hydrocephalus. So according to uh, the national, the national uh, cancer, cancer uh, uh, excuse me, please. Uh, according to the NCCN guideline, the presence of any of the following is sufficient to diagnose a uh, leptomeningeal metastasis. If the patient has positive CSF cytology, Positive radiologic findings with support, supportive clinical findings consistent with leptomeningitis disease. Signs and symptoms of consistent, uh, consistent with leptomeningitis disease or non-specific but abnormal CSF studies. As we said, these are the nodular uh, enhancement of the different sulci. So this patient is having a leptomeningitis uh, metastasis. We can see linear enhancement of the different cisterns of the different systems. And here the patient is having uh, hydrocephalus. So now the dilemma is, whom should we treat aggressively, uh, who should we treat aggressively and whom should we just uh, treat non-aggressively? So uh, the NC, NCCN said, uh, uh, found out that patients who should be treated aggressively are, patient, aggressively are patients with low tumor burdens good functional performance status, lack of major neurologic deficit, no evidence of bulky disease on imaging studies, the absence of CSF uh, flow block using radioisotope uh, imaging, and expected survival greater than three months and limited extraneural metastatic disease. The aim of the treatment here is to improve and stabil or stabilize the neurologic functions, the, the neurologic functions, to maintain the quality of life and possibly extend the extend survival. So yeah, we can use, uh, they can use uh, the treatment could use radiotherapy, systemic chemotherapy, and intrathecal uh, chemotherapy. We have to note that uh, metrotexat, citarabine, uh, longer acting uh, liposomal citarabine, and tiotepa improve or stabilize the neurologic functions, maintain quality of life, and possibly extend uh, survival. But uh, metotexat, citarabine, tiopemper, and temozolomid achieve cytotoxic uh, CSF concentration when given at high doses, although they cross the blood-brain barrier. Hence, if administered is an intrathecal and delivery, delivery will reduce we reduce the the dose of uh, the dose the overall dosage of these uh, molecules and hence reduce the alpha effect of these molecules. Now let's pass to the indirect complications. 
The indirect complications are grouped in two grand groups. We have the cerebrovascular diseases and the infectious diseases. The cerebrovascular diseases represent 15% of the complication of uh, tumor, brain tumor complications. In most, uh, uh, intercranial hemorrhage is the most common form of stroke in patients with hematologic malignancies. Why there is an approximately even distribution of ICH and the uh, ischemic stroke in with solid tumors. The infarction year, first let's talk about the infarction or ischemic stroke. It is usually due to compression or necrosis of intracranial blood vessels, intravascular embolization by the tumor, hypercoagulability via tumor production of mucin, leading, leading to formation of platelet rich thrombi, thrombi, release of procoagulant molecules such as tissue factor, cancer procoagulant cytokine, cancer procoagulant cytokines such as uh, tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin one and six and also due to hyperviscosity leading to obstruction of small end vessels. The second type of uh, disease, is, uh, most, most, uh, which is the most common, is uh, hemorrhagic stroke. This is usually due to uh, tumoral uh, hemorrhagic conversion. It is most frequent in glioblastomas and in brain metastasis. Here we can see an image on this uh, T1 uh, T1, uh, T1 MRI, weighted MRI, where we uh, can see the hemorrhages as this hyper uh, intense uh, image at the center of the tumor. At the center of the tumor, we can see that there's a voluminous hemodema around the tumor and there's even a midline shift already. We can't even see the frontal, um, the anterior runs of the, of the, of the lateral ventricles. Lastly, these patients are also subjected to uh, cerebral venous thrombosis. It can occur as a consequence of hypercoagulability or by direct compression or invasion of the cerebral cyanosis from the dura or calvarial metastasis and the meningioma. So this is, uh, these two images we have, uh, on the first we have the, the a, a brain scan and on enhanced brain scan, where we can see uh, a tumor, uh, uh, a, tum a tumor, a, a, a parietal tumor, a parietal, it's a parietal tumor, yes, which is with a, a hemorrhage inside the tumor, and you can see a, a, there's a large uh, zone of uh, edema and the midline shift. Same here with this T2 weighted uh, MRI image. You can see an intra intratumoral uh, hemorrhage. So lastly, uh, patients could be also sub with uh, uh, aden uh, PGC could be subjected to, uh, uh, in uh, to an hemorrhage in the, or infection in the in the in the in the pituitary adenoma. This is usually called uh, pituitary apoplexy. This is a rare but potentially life-threatening complications. So the clinical presentations of uh, patients with cerebrovascular disease are usually uh, those of a stroke, of a usual stroke patient. Usually, uh, this can also lead to brain edema, leading to increased intracranial. They also come with uh, signs of encephalopathy or multifocal uh, cerebral infarct. As for patients with pituitary apoplexy, usually uh, the patient will present with a sudden or brutal uh, visual field or acuity defect. This is an emergency, or this uh, usually a surgical emergency. So on this table, we are trying to uh, summarize the different vascular events, the different causes, the mechanisms, and the associated malignancy. Uh, what I encircles are those which are brain uh, malignancy, brain malignancy, which will lead to these uh, different complications. So we can see here that for hemorrhagic uh, stroke, hemorrhagic stroke, we usually find it mainly in, uh, as I said earlier, in glioblastomas and brain metastasis. 
the management, as for the management of uh, these patients, uh, for ischemic stroke, the role of antipedal agents is in secondary prevention for cancer-related stroke remains really uncertain, so it's not really used. But they prefer the use of low uh, molecular weight uh, heparin product over warfarin due to the better bio, bio, uh, availability and has a longer life and there's uh, no drug to drug action. As for the treatment of uh, intratumoral hemorrhages, it depends, it usually depends on different factors. That's the size and the site of the hemorrhage, the clinical status of the patient, and the presence of uh, coagulability. Of, uh, coag the coagulability. But lastly, we shall talk about uh, the infections. This is usually an important cause of neurologic morbidity and mortality in patients with cancer in general and brain cancer. There's, it incre there's an increased susceptibility in cancer patients due to the immu immunologic uh, their, their, their immunologic status being compromised by uh, their, either the, the malignancy or the treatment that they receive. The spread of these uh, infections could be either hematogenous either uh, metastasis, metastasis from, fo from focal infections or direct extensions from surrounding uh, structures. So usually in brain tumors, this is the main, uh, this is the main uh, 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 method of spread, that's direct extensions. The patient usually have, usually have some risk factors. That's a patient usually have a, who presents with, a, will present usually with a neutropenia less than 500 per millimeter cube secondary to intensive uh, chemotherapy, or the patient will even prevent with a bone marrow invasion. Usually, uh, if there's a bone marrow invasion or aplasia, uh, you have a high risk of having bacterial or fungal infections. So on this table, I tried to, so we tried to summarize the different, uh, the few different germs, uh, the different bacteria, fungi, or uh, viruses, which could be encountered in head, uh, uh, tumors uh, as a, it's a complication of uh, a head tumor, uh, a brain tumor, sorry. So we can see that staphylococca is usually associated with head tumors and this is the main treatment. Also with patients with VP patients, since uh, staphylococcus aureus is usually an ubiquitary, uh, ubiquitary uh, uh, germ. We can also have cryptococcus neoformans, which is usually associated with patients who have a diminishing, diminished immunologic status due to chronic steroid use, or even candida albicans or, or Epstein-Barr virus. So to conclude, I will say that no oncologic emergencies are relatively common in patients with cancer and associated with significant morbidity and mortality. The high index of suspicion is often needed. A high index of suspicion is often needed to make diagnosis such as increase in intracranial pressure, hydrocephalus, subclinical seizures, meningitis, or venous sinus thrombosis. The rapid uh, recognition and proper treatment can prolong the patient's life, uh, life and improve functional status and uh, his, his quality of life. So lastly, I will finish by this slide to say, uh, to say thank you all and please protect yourself during this pandemic of coronavirus. This is Amari Francis, thank you. Very good, thank you very, very much, Nathalie. Excellent and a good quality slides and presentation. Um, okay, uh, we'll talk about later how you have to use the technology of that pointer. That was excellent. Uh, that's the first time I've seen it. We'll talk about that later. Anyways, I'd like to greet Carlos. Hello, Carlos. Carlos is a big neurosurgeon from from Barcelona or Madrid. I'm sorry, in Ecuador. Hello, Carlos. Are you there? Hello, hello. Uh, good afternoon for everybody. Hello, Carlos. Good afternoon. Good yes. afternoon, sir. Yes. Any any uh, questions or, or comments uh, for Natalie? Uh, don't leave me hanging. Marco, any comments or, or questions? Hey, 
Uh, well, um, first of all, my best congratulations for Natalie. It's very exhaustive. I appreciate a lot. Uh, you focalized also about uh, infection uh, in uh, patients with uh, brain tumor. I want to highlight uh, uh, the uh, importance of surveillance of antipyretic drugs because uh, I have experience of patients when you use uh, valproic acid and uh, in these patients sometimes you see a deterioration. Pay attention to check for uh, ammoni uh, ammonemia because in these patients you okay. can have a deterioration cause uh, valproic acid, but it's not related to the tumor, but to the anti ap drugs. So check the ammonemia, and you see there is a hyperammonemia. So pay attention to this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any comments? Uh, Regis, we haven't met you. How are you doing? You want to introduce yourself there, Regis? Mm. Uh, no, no. Today, today, no, everything is okay for me. Thank you, Natalie, for the presentation. Uh, it's all. Okay, where are you from, uh, Regis? Are you from Cameroon also? Yeah, 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 John. I'm coming from, from Cameroon. I'm a member of Afan too. The last time I present myself, so uh, I thought yeah. you, 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 you remind me. Yeah, you, you remind. But Regis, there may be one or two people watching. <laughs> they may want to know who you are. <laughs> it's, it's not, okay. hopefully, hopefully it's not a private conversation. <laughs> okay, Zolo, <laughs> any Zolo, any comments or uh, questions for Nathalie? Question, question, no. The only comment is that it was a wonderful presentation. Thank you very much, Dr. Natalie, for the quality of the presentation. And uh, it, was, it was really an interesting moment. Very good. Thank you, Zolo. And Per, I don't think we've met Per. I don't know, Per Damien. I don't know if you can hear us. Can you hear us okay, Per? Go ahead. Well, perhaps, perhaps not, not connected. Okay, Natalie, very good. I'd like to thank you uh, for the presentation. And uh, uh, we look forward to hearing more from you in the future. And, and okay. to everyone, uh, be prepared for online conferencing because we're going to see uh, a lot more, Marco, of online conferences, because obviously neurosurgeons can't travel now, and it's going to be getting worse. Uh, who knows how long it's going to last. The good news is we're equipped to handle it education-wise, because we know the platform, we know how to arrange conferences. So, so Zolo, what shouldn't be a hard thing to do to put, put together conferences for the next, well, who knows how many months it's going to be. Where, where people are restricted from traveling, uh, not only in between countries, but possibly between buildings. I don't know how it's going to get. And so anyways, uh, we'll end this chat now. Thank you everyone for coming. <laughs>